Hello guys, my name is Lucas and welcome to a new tutorial series. In this series we're going to be learning how to make a cartoon style, Wind Waker style seaplane, just like the one you're seeing right now. So let's get started. First I'm going to have an empty project and I'm going to create a plane which is going to be used as the sea. The plane is not as big as a C, so we're going to scale this by 5 in all the three axes. So we have a bigger plane. The key component that we're going to be using for getting the effect of moving water waves on the C is going to be the cloth component. So I'm going to add a cloth component to the plane and I'm going to rename this plane to water plane. So please follow along with me. I'm going to cover anything in detail if you want me to do so let me know in the comments. So if you want to know more about cloth's component and would like to learn the different uses, please let me know and I will make a tutorial about that. But for now, please follow along with me. I'm going to start by deleting the mesh collider because we're not going to be needing that. And in the skin mesh render, we're going to select a mesh. Here, this is mesh none. We're going to select the plane mesh. And the plane mesh has approximately, I think it is 121 vertices. So that's good enough to make an animation for waves in the sea. For those of you who don't know what the cloth component is, it allows us to simulate cloth movement and cloth rippling on a plane or some other mesh. So if we take a look at the sea, the sea surface behaves a little bit like a plane or a little bit like, for example, a bed sheet that is being moving or blown by the wind. So we're going to simulate that with the cloth component. And if we just press play because we're using gravity, this is going to fall. If we don't want it to fall, we need to set some constraints. And constraints are points that will not be affected by the simulation as much. And these are the points of the plane that are going to be moved when we move the plane around. So for example, if I compare this with a towel, imagine this is a towel, the constraint points will be the contact points from from where I grab my towel. So let's say I, I have all these points here as a constraint and I move this around, all the other points around the plane will follow this and follow the laws of physics. So it's just like I hold the towel from this point, from this part here, and move it around, swing it around. So just for a quick demonstration, I'm going to select all these vertices and take here max distance, and I'm going to leave it at zero. So it's not going to move at all. So all the other points will fall because they're using gravity and will follow those 12 points. So if we click on play, now we can see that actually here is our constraints and the rest of the plane moves like if it was a blanket or a paper towel or whatever. So there are some settings we can change. For example, the stretching stiffness. This is how non-elastic the material is. So if we set this to a lower value, let's say 0 0.5 or 0 0.1, you see it's much more elastic so it behaves more like clothing or silk instead of paper. And if we increase the value, it's going to be a little bit more stiff. That, that means a little bit harder. So we can play with that setting when we want to set our seawater. So we don't want to simulate or emulate a towel. We want to emulate the surface of the sea. So I'm going to set the constraints so we can emulate that. So first of all, I'm going to unselect those vertices by selecting them and unclicking max distance. And I'm going to select all the vertices on the edges of the plane. So we can hold shift and select with left click all the vertices we want to set as constraints and press this toggle here, max distance. And we can actually set a max distance so they also have a tolerance. So they will also be affected by the physics simulation with a maximum movement distance. So we can make them very stretchy or very stiff as well. I'm going to leave mine at 0 
so they have just a little range of movement when we do the simulation. So if now we press play, you see that the plane is going to fall right in the middle, it's going to bounce a bit because we have some stretching stiffness, and it's going to slowly stop until it's not moving anymore. We're going to remove the use of gravity so the plane doesn't fall. And now you see it's just a steady plane. And if I press edit constraints, we can see each point clearly. But now, how do we make it look like waves in the sea? And it's simple. If you take a look, I'm going to move the Y position of this plane up and down. So it's going to have some after consequences on the movement of the attached constraints. So if I move this very fast, you see everything moves non-simultaneously. So it has a delay and it simulates a stretchy, like elastic piece of cloth. So we can use this to simulate the waves in our sea. The only thing we need now is to have a script that allows us to automatically move the plane up and down, and we're done. For that, I'm going to use an asset called iTwin, and if you would like to learn more about iTwin, again, please let me know in the comments, and I'm going to make a tutorial about that in depth. But for now, just follow along with me. We download iTwin by pixel placement. This is a tool that allows us to make animations from the code. We're not going to need the sample. And we can make an animation, a very cool animation, with just a line of code. So this is a very useful tool. I recommend all of you using it. In the water plane, I'm going to add a new component and I'm going to call it wave controller. Now, I'm not sure if you can hear the rain here, but there's quite heavy rain here in Hong Kong. So we will need two variables for this. The first variable is going to be a float called height. So this is how high are we going to move up and down because we need to move up and down constantly to simulate the movement of the, of the waves. And the second float that we need is a time variable. So here in start, we're going to call a function from iTwin and the function we need is move by. What this does is we give it some argument and a game object so it's going to move that game object by such amount in such time with such curve you can do that all in one line so first we select this game object so this is attached to the wave plane so we're going to move the wave plane object and we're going to use a itween hash table so itween.hash and we're going to move it only on the y-axis, so we simply type y, and we give it the height. We are going to do this in time, time, so it's the time that we will assign the editor. We need a loop type, because we want it to loop and not only run once. So the loop type that we want is ping pong, because we want it to move up and down and not up and up and up. So we need to use ping pong. And lastly, we're going to use an is type. And is type is the nonlinear deacceleration or nonlinear acceleration of the animated objects. If we don't use an is type, everything just stops suddenly. And that doesn't look good when we animate something. So I'm going to select iTween.is type and I'm going to is in is oops is in out because we want to is in the way in and the way out and we're going to use a sine curve and that's it if we go back to the editor we'll see we have height and time so I'm going to take this to anything for example five and we want to move up by five units in one second and then of course he's going to move down back to the original position also in one second and keep repeating that so if we play and take a look we have this 
and it looks very weird. It looks like a, I don't know, like a trampoline, I guess. So we need to edit a bit our settings. So maybe the height is too much. So I'm going to set it to two and see how that looks. You can just keep making this by trial and error. Trial and error. I think this is looking much better right now. We have different movement on each ver vertex, vertex. Remember, if you edit constraints, you can see all the points much more clearly. So you can see the way they're moving. They're behaving a little bit more like waves on the sea. But they're still moving too fast. So what I'm going to do now is change the world acceleration scale. So how much world space acceleration of the character will affect cloth vertices. This means the movement will have a bigger or smaller acceleration depending on this factor. So because the wave, the sea is a big place, the acceleration should have a lower value um, because that what that's what it would look like to our eyes so now we actually cannot see any movement everything is moving together too neatly so maybe we need to increase this a bit to 0 0.8 see how that works so it feels a bit better it's still I still think it's moving too fast so now in the wave controller I'm going to increase the time of each cycle so it's going to be two seconds and we can try that so now it's going to be move much more slower you can see the sides the sides are actually the thing that we're moving and the middle points just follow the side points as a simulation of a piece of cloth. So if we stand in the middle, we can actually see this is starting to look like waves in the sea. So you can keep playing with the values until you get what you feel feels better for your game or suits better your game. Maybe you want a really crazy, elastic, bouncy place. I don't know. You can play with those settings until you find what you think is optimal for your game. So that's pretty much it for the deformation of the plane. Now we are going to make a texture which is seamless so we can repeat it across the plane. And we're going to animate that texture across the plane so we can simulate the movement of the ripples across the waves. But for that, my friends, we're going to need to wait for the next episode because we just ran out of time. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please, please let me know by giving me a like, sharing this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I am going to come back. My FYP presentation is coming soon, so I'm going to be a bit busy in these two weeks. But after that, I'm going to come back. I stopped uploading videos for such a long time, so I'm really sorry about that. But after my presentation, I promise I'm going to be uploading at least one to two videos per week so please keep the support and thank you very much guys i love you keep developing and i'll see you next time goodbye